flight attendants, prepare for landing. What's up everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm here in Portland, Oregon, and I have a huge road trip ahead of me and hopefully I could document a lot of it for you guys, just so you could pick up some tips and tricks from this vlog. And my first stop is actually gonna be at the Portland uh, Japanese Garden, and I'm gonna photograph the famous tree that everybody loves to get, and that's the Japanese maple tree. And it looks huge from all the pictures you see on the internet. It's actually quite small. It's probably around six feet tall, something like that, give or take. And um, we're going to get really low with a wide angle lens and I'll take some video of that tree just so you can kind of see what it looks like in reality versus what you see in those pictures that are all over the internet. And yeah, this is a bucket list location for mine. So I'm super excited. This is my first time here in this state and there's so much to see a lot of waterfalls and uh, some beautiful lakes. And then eventually I'm going to hit the coast as well. So stay tuned for all of that. So let's get this adventure started. It's pretty. I've one of the most famous trees that's ever been photographed before, the Japanese maple tree right here. Now a lot of photographers take wide angle shots at a low angle, so the pictures you see on the internet uh, make it look very big, but it's quite small as you can see behind me. So I finished taking a couple pictures and I might come back a little later when the sun is in a different location. So I figured I'd start the trip off proper by visiting one of the places that's been on my bucket list for a really long time. So I'm gonna go explore and I'll keep you informed as we go along. All right, so we're walking up the airplane home and I was gonna try and drive up, but this driveway is, uh, you need a high clearance vehicle because I kept bottoming out. So I just parked along the road. There's a little pull out, but we're gonna go, go check it out. See what's going on here. I'm gonna fly my drone, try and get some top down shots. And uh, yeah, it's pretty creepy back here with all these trees. But uh, hopefully I get a little clearing to fly the drone up. That's cool, they got the lights on and everything. Yeah. Yeah, I think somebody's in there. All right, so we're at airplane home. 
and I think somebody's staying inside. I think I hear some movement. So I'm just gonna fly my drone really quick and get out of their way. Thanks, Thanks again. Yeah. yeah, my pleasure. Also, please don't step on this panel. All right, yeah. yeah. This is okay. Yeah. Ooh. Yee! <laughs> <laughs> how you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Bruce? Mike. Hi, Mike. Nice Good to meet you. you. Janelle, nice Janelle. to meet you. <laughs> hmm. Ni hao? Uh, Onion Korean. asale? Ni hao? Korean? Is that Korean? Oh, Onion asale? Yeah, it's yeah. Korean. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm adopted, so I don't really yeah. know a lot of them. Yeah, she, she was, came here as a baby, adopted, uh, so she doesn't know yeah. Korean. Yeah. <laughs> Have you been back? Uh, no. We want I would to. like to eventually, yeah. yeah you should. Yeah. Yeah, I recommend Ilsan. Okay. Il Ilsan's a lovely place with a beautiful park, and there are lots of young people there. Oh, um, cool. It's, it's attached to Seoul, but it was a fully planned city. Oh, really? All just bare fields, wow. and they planned everything and sure. then assembled it. Oh, awesome. Wow. Yeah, yeah it That's was cool. That's crazy. Yeah. That's awesome. Have you been there a lot? or um, A few times. Yeah. Se several times. Um, nice. I have a dear friend, um, and um, yeah. Cool. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I wouldn't live there. <laughs> yeah. But I, but I do like to visit. I like and, um um, yeah, I like being there. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah, we would love to go to Seoul and yeah. check yeah. that out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I recommend it. There's so much to see and and it's it's such an eye opener because the Korean people mm -hmm. have fabricated infrastructure at a pace and of a magnitude which seems impossible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, it's like a miracle. Yeah. It's yeah. Amazing. Wow. Cool. This thing's pretty cool. How long has this been here? Twenty years. Twenty years? Yeah. This is version 1.0. Oh. <laughs> version 2.0 is in the works. Really? Really? Is, is that a different location? Yeah, it's in yeah. Um, Shintomi Cho, which is a little bit west of Miyazaki, where I live in half time. Oh, awesome. Okay. Very cool. cool. Of course. Um, okay, the procedure is out of your shoes, but don't touch your socks on either the tiles or the ground. Okay. Go directly to the stairs because. If you touch your socks on any of that stuff, your socks will be dirty. Gotcha. I, I could put my shoes on here, right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. And I'm going to take my shoes upstairs because they end up getting just on the wing and other places. And you're welcome on the way too, of course. Okay. Awesome. And there's a procedure for that. Yeah. Oh, I left my down there. <laughs> yeah. Good. Um, these are clean. They get washed every time. Okay, cool. Please leave them on the floor in the pile when you finish. All right. So that I know that they need to be washed. And I've run out of the, you know, those have been worn by another guest today. Oh, sorry. You're welcome to, well, you're I welcome could... to if you like. Yeah, but I don't just really care. socks on. Oh, she should okay. be all right. Yeah, okay, I'm all <laughs> go good with that. Um, okay. And That's crazy. lavatory is back here. Let me slide past you. Sure. Uh, this is my lav. Okay. This is the guest lab. Okay. Great. And toilet paper goes down the toilet, please, not in the bins. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I know it's it's so obvious, isn't it? But um, every now and then, there's toilet. In fact, this morning I found more toilet paper in the bins. Oh, oh geez. Geez. <laughs> yeah. It's not my favorite thing cleaning toilet paper out of the bins. Yeah, I don't <laughs> blame you. Anyone's favorite. Thing. So if you wanna. Yeah, make yourselves at home. This all runs and works. Yeah. All right. Yeah, okay. Jetliners are flying homes and. They provide everything you need except a clothes washer and a shower. Sure. But they're easily installed. Okay. Um, and we can turn the camera lights back on momentarily. Let's see, did I mention you can catch the eyes that you capture any media of anything? Yeah. Yes, you yeah. did. Yeah. Thank you. Um, please don't sit on my feet on sofa. It's just for clean naked light. Okay. okay. It's not for outdoor clothes. You know, it's just my bed. All right. Watch out for the look on the floor right here. I okay. can't trim that until the hottest day of summer. This There's a little lip in the floor. Oh, okay. yeah. It's a tow stubber going aft. That's the danger there. Um, and you walk on the wing, but there's a shoe procedure. You have to just shag your shoes and, and, and I'll, I'll explain where okay. you have to do that. Um, you, do. you can also go into the number two engine to sell that top engine uh, intake. Oh yeah? Yeah. And you, many people walk in the fuselage, it's bloody dangerous, but they do. I don't yeah. prohibit it. We did that, uh, we went to Iceland, there's a, a plane wreck there. Oh. Um, yeah, it's scary. <laughs> <laughs> Very fun, eh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Once you start to sweat, you can't stop. Um, this is Samsung. 
That's Naomi san, Naoko san, Chiko chan, Yorick san, and Klein san. Okay. They're trying to warn you that the seats are not secured in their tracks and they have no outer legs. Gotcha. So if you sit in an outside seat like they are, the roll will flip up. Okay. So okay. center seats are fine. Gotcha. Okay, who wants to be master of the cabin lights? Uh, you want to do it? I'll record sure. it. <laughs> okay, it's right here. Okay. It's three position switch. Okay. Exercise it and leave it in the downmost position. Okay. That'll give you about 10 minutes of light right there. Oh. Okay. And then the downmost position. And be sure it's always in the downmost position. You can exercise it whenever you like to reset for another 10 minutes. Oh, all right. Did you do it right? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Um, the thing is, leave it in the downmost position. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and then that's yeah. it. And then you've got about 10 minutes. Whatever gotcha. you want, another 10 minutes, just exercise it again. Okay, great. Good. Um, and flight deck is here. You're welcome to sit in any of the seats. Um, I'll tidy up a bit. These are active. Please don't change their settings. Yeah, I won't touch that. Well, it's okay. But if, and if you, nothing will break or explode. But some things need to be on. Some things need to be off. Mm -hmm. So if you if there's an accident, just tell me, and I'll I'll reset them okay. properly. However, the furthest right and furthest forward is dome white. You're welcome to use it anytime you like. That's awesome. Leave it off when you finish, please. Um, and these rotate up for easier access. Um, if you can execute a sufficiently high performance takeoff, please <laughs> take us to white. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, so on that side, I'm gonna try and get a, a selfie of us. <laughs> I'm sorry about the heat. You know, yeah, I, I can turn on a cooler if you like. It won't have much impact up here, probably none at all. Oh, this is really fascinating. Yeah, this is really cool. Um, I purchased this from a salvage company, which is basically a wrecking company. Mm -hmm. I'll never do that again. Okay. The flight deck was fully skeletonized except the circuit breaker panels. Gotcha. With the version 2.0 project, the aircraft's acquired directly from the airline after its last passenger flight wow. and retained entirely intact except for the engines. We'll probably have the engines removed because they're very expensive. Mm -hmm. But they'll be removed by a service crew, not a salvage crew. Gotcha. gotcha. So nothing else will be touched. So. Okay. A wow. much more ambitious yeah. project, which um, whose goal is to do everything right. Whereas yeah. with this project, I did several things wrong. <laughs> well, this first is your first project, one, right? Yeah. So you're yeah. bound to make some mistakes. But now you know for, like you said, the other project you're working on, you already know about yeah. <laughs> all your shortcomings. So now you could correct yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that's version 2.0. So it's airplanehomev2.com. <laughs> <laughs> now I saw the science of concert. Well, like, so how often do you have concerts here? Um, at least twice a year, and the next one is 7 September. Okay. Um, and they're fun. Um, hundreds of people come, and the forest is filled with entertainment kiosks, and, mm -hmm. and you know, the musicians are... We either have DJs, which we've had in fall concerts, or live performers, which we've had in, in uh, early summer concerts. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to lobby my teammates to swap that, have DJs in the in the first concerts and live music in the second concerts. Um, but I don't know if it's feasible because live, live artists are busy at that time of year, yeah. so we'll see. Mm -hmm. um, in any case, uh, it, it's fun. The yeah. talent is quite good and nice. um, everybody has a good time. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, this is really cool yeah. and unique and different, you know, so. Yeah, we've yeah. never been to anything like this before, so. Yeah. Well, you're always welcome. Yeah. Um, Thank you. I provide Thank lodging you. for people, too. That's I saw on your website, yeah. yeah. That, that's pretty interesting, yeah. Yeah. staying in this, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it saves money, too. It's free. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> that's generous of you. Yeah. Um, and um, let's see, make yourselves at home. You can stay as long as you like. Thank you. I have yeah. one or two more bites of my lunch that I'm going to polish off. <laughs> <laughs> so much for showing us around. Yeah, it's nice meeting you. Yeah. yeah you too. Good luck uh, on project number two you. when you do it. Yeah, take it easy. Yeah, you too. <laughs> the plane. So we finished touring the plane and Bruce was awesome. He's a really nice guy. Um, and he's really open to people coming by and visiting him so he could give you a tour of his plane house. So I highly recommend it. I'll put the address in the description below for people that are interested in checking this place out. It's really cool. It's very unique and uh, he's a sweetheart. So come check it out. Talk to you guys later. Yeah. 
so we're at Rowena Crest and I'm waiting for it to get dark so I could take a picture of that cool curved road that I just showed you and the Milky Way right above it. And I'm gonna try and get some light trails from my car. So I'm gonna drive up and down that road while I'm doing a time lapse. And hopefully I can blend some images together and create something pretty cool. So keep watching. I'm gonna go out and brave the wind. I can't record out there. It's just too windy and the microphone on the GoPro will uh, it will sound really wonky. So I'm just going to end this right here and I'll show you guys some pictures shortly. All right, so I'm going to finish off this vlog with a quick Milky Way edit. And uh, this was at Rowena Crest in Oregon. This is a really cool spot that people like to photograph because of the horseshoe shaped road. And it's really cool when you get some light trails on here from cars as you can see from this other photo right here. And we're gonna be using this for my foreground and we're gonna blend it with a tracked shot of the Milky Way. Now I was able to take a tracked shot from up here in this location, but it was really windy so I was getting a lot of shakiness with the camera equipment. So I ended up driving to a different location and doing some more track shots, which I just like these a little bit better. So I'm gonna use that for this uh, Milky Way blend here. And um, I shot this at f8, uh, 200 seconds, ISO 250, right around twilight. This right here is actually Jupiter, and the Milky Way is kind of in this general vicinity. Um, it's not quite visible just yet. It came out maybe another half hour later. But um, we're going to use this for a nice clean foreground. So let's make some adjustments to it, starting with the white balance because it has a blue hue to it. So we want to get rid of that. So we're going to warm it up. Just like that. I want to increase my shadows. Now I don't want to go too bright since this is a night shot. So um, we got to be a little careful not to kind of overexpose the foreground. I'm actually going to bring a gradient mask and darken this upper portion right here because as things get farther away they should technically get darker. So let's darken this up. And I really want to darken this spot right here a little bit more. So I'm just going to paint and lower the exposure. And a little bit right here as well. Next, I just want to brighten up this area a tad bit more. And I'm actually going to desaturate it a little bit. And take out a little bit of contrast as well. And I'm going to make this a little bit darker. And I don't plan on making any adjustments to the Milky Way right now. It actually looks really good right out of the box because I use the Ioptron Star Tracker. I shot this at ISO 2000, f4.5, 128 seconds, and my focal length was 24 millimeters. So we're going to select those two photos. Go to Photo, Edit In, Open as Layers in Photoshop. All right, so here we are in Photoshop and I'm gonna lower the opacity of the foreground just to help me position my Milky Way. And I'm actually gonna use uh, Jupiter right here as a reference point and kind of manipulate the Milky Way in a position that would be accurate to this location. So let's lower this and we'll drag the Milky Way over. And I'm gonna do Edit, Free Transform. I just want to rotate this a little bit and scoot it over. And then 
we can raise the opacity back up and make a copy of both layers. That way if we do anything destructive, we have a backup. All right, let me just increase the size a little bit and we're gonna select the foreground layer and create a layer mask. And then grab your brush tool. Make sure the opacity is 100% and the hardness is at 100%. And let's start revealing the sky underneath. It doesn't have to be perfect, just get really close to the horizon. All right, that should be pretty good. Now we're gonna to go to select a mask by right clicking on the layer mask. Now you're gonna to wanna to play around with these settings, but try using mine to start with. Uh, I like to use a radius of one pixel, smooth at one, feather 0.1 or 0.2 pixels. Um, contrast, I'll keep between 10 and 25%. And then I'll shift the edge, usually negative five. Um, sometimes I go a little higher or lower, it really depends on the circumstances. So we'll start with this, just start painting along this edge. All right, let's zoom in here, see how well it did. Now this looks pretty good. You could kind of see a little bit of blue from Blue Hour. Uh, if we hit decontaminate colors, that could help fix it. And I noticed that they added a slider here, which comes in real handy. Um, sometimes decontaminate colors can do some funky things to your image. So uh, now with this slider, it helps prevent that if you keep it on the low end, keep it at like 10 to 20% range. So I'm just gonna mess around with this a little bit. So let me see if I can zoom here and show you guys the difference. So this is without it on. Now if I activate it, it kind of helped a little bit. Um, let me increase the percentage a little bit more. Yeah, it's getting a little bit better. All right, so that blended pretty nicely. And if you want to do some more editing, let's say you had to darken the edges a little bit more, you could click on that foreground layer and you could switch to your burn tool. And you could burn the shadows a little bit. Just keep the, the exposure around one or two percent. You don't want to go too high and overdo it. And this kind of helps darken those edges as well. All right. And that made those edges just a little bit darker and less noticeable. So if you're like zoomed in at you know, three or 400%, you're not gonna notice that there's a little blue tint or anything like that. So that looks really good. We could crop this image. Now, why the sky is still separate from the foreground, um, I could do some edits. Let's make a copy of it. And this is kind of subjective to whatever you like. I personally like to do a little bit of burning and dodging. So let me create a large brush and just burn the shadows a little bit. And I just kind of sweep over it a couple times. I don't go too crazy. And then I'll switch to dodge and I will do the same thing. I'll go over it with the highlights and just kind of hit the core a little bit. You could also play around with different modes. Um, I like to use soft light sometimes and then lower the opacity. Um, just kind of dial it in just to give a little bit of contrast but not go too far. Something right around there. Now for this video, I'm just gonna flatten my image but if you plan on editing your images further or maybe coming back and doing some tweaks or changing something, um, then I suggest saving a Photoshop file and um, not really flatten all these images or anything like that. But I'm just gonna do it for the sake of this video. So I'm gonna flatten this. 
and make a copy. I'm going to go to Filter, Nick Collections, and go to Color Effects Pro. Sometimes I like to add a couple of these filters to the image just to kind of see what it does. Um, one thing that I like to do the most is Glamour Glow, which I already have right here. And so you can see what it does. This is the extreme. Obviously, we don't want to go that far but maybe around 40% and we'll keep the saturation around 5% now this helps make the photo look a little more dreamy and also kind of helps blend those images together to make them look a little bit more natural in my opinion and you could also do a couple other things in here I also like to use uh, tonal contrast or sometimes pro contrast so let's do pro contrast and typically in this I'll only really mess around with the dynamic contrast slider now this is gonna brighten it up a little bit but I don't go too far with the slider typically 10 to 20 percent uh, I'll leave it right there and we're just gonna hit OK So here's the before and here's the after and obviously it's a very subtle change um, that is typically what I try and shoot for I never really want to do anything too drastic so now I'm going to flatten this and hit file save alright so now that we're back in Lightroom I can do some further edits as well maybe I'll throw a little vignette on there uh, I could also play around with the clarity and the texture sliders um, or I could selectively just alter certain parts of this photo and again this boils down to personal preference so I'm not going to jump into too much detail with that alright so I'm just going to leave this right there I want to give you guys a quick little edit uh, sorry I took a little hiatus from YouTube because I was on vacation for two weeks and I got back with a ton of work to do so I'm trying to get caught up I have like 2,000 photos to edit and a bunch of video to go through so hopefully I'll get caught up soon and I plan on doing another Milky Way edit next weekend so stay tuned for that uh, I appreciate you guys also checking out my new Teesprings account that I created I'm gonna start designing t-shirts through the winter months so um, check that out and um, maybe there's nothing there that you like so far but hopefully in the near future I'll get some pretty cool designs up there um, it's just going to take me some time to create them. So just bear with me. A lot of work, and I'm trying my best to keep up with it all. So I will touch base with you guys next week. Take it easy. Bye-bye.